All right, hey, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here. It is November 7th, 2018, 10.26 a.m. And uh, uh, what, a, what a day yesterday for election uh, results and voting. Pretty crazy. Quite a few surprises in there, but uh, it is what it is. Hopefully everyone got out there and uh, uh, exercised their, their, uh, their voting privilege. I was uh, I, I actually did a mail in here in California you can uh, do early voting early voting uh, by mailing in your ballot which is pretty cool that way I can avoid the uh, long lines and all that good stuff anyway uh, not too happy with a lot of California uh, proposition results but uh, it is what it is anyway earthquake activity uh, for the most part has died down somewhat uh, looking at the last uh, 24 hours of activity here it shows a period of quietness out here on the um, Pacific Plate for one pretty quiet activity um, let me see here. So nothing big to report out here at all the latest earthquake uh, being this 4.6 down here uh, in this region here, but Other than that not a whole lot of activity uh, there is a tremendous amount of activity uh, near or just close by near the uh, Cascadia subduction zone there. Uh, most of you folks know about the slow slip event movements that do take place there um, on the uh, subducting region down, down below. Uh, first, before we go into this, I want to show you guys a little image here. Uh, I think I can better... Uh, show you guys or give you guys an idea of where this activity is occurring here of course this here is a layout map of the um uh cascadia subduction zone oops hold on one second here uh, let's see if it's gonna let me uh it doesn't want to show my mouse anyway um so yeah, you got a layout here of the North American plate. You, you can see parts of Washington up here and the general description and idea of how the uh, plates work here in this region. Uh, you got, of course, the North American plate, which includes uh, Washington, Oregon, parts of California, because part of California is also uh, the Pacific plate. Uh, it's a plate boundary. Very, very... Uh, extreme western california i should say parts of it but anyway um i don't want to go into that but i do want to pinpoint and point out uh that red circle the source if you look at subduction zone uh red circle that's where we're capable of seeing those large mega quakes uh, 9.0 and above um and that would be an area uh where we would see it just off the coast there in that subducting area of the juan de fuca plate and the north american plate uh, further down, as you go underneath the continent there itself, uh, you go into the purple circles, which is the deep Juan de Fuca plate. <clears throat> now that's kind of like a area where uh, things tend to move. It's not as locked up as much, uh, so it's movement. And that movement, the slow slippage, is what we're seeing on this uh, slow slip map. Okay, now you just got to picture that. Uh, this is, of course, a different view, but... You know, picture where those purple uh, areas are, the purple circles. Of course, earthquakes can or, uh, earthquakes can happen deep down there as well. Um, but we do see tremor, and that tremor is being picked up um, pretty good, pretty good, really good actually, over the past couple days there in southern Oregon near Medford, uh, or just west of Medford to be exact there, and that's uh, very interesting because it's not anywhere else I mean there's a couple sporadic uh, areas out there in uh, throughout Oregon and maybe looks like through Washington as well that's showing uh, a little bit of activity but the the intensity and the uh, the amount the multitude is uh, somewhat spectacular in a way because it's been a while since we've seen something like this down here in southern Oregon so that means, okay, what this means is that there's movement uh, underneath that crustal area that I was showing you. You got the Juan de Fuca plate underneath here. 
you know, kind of going way down in there into the uh, um, the different layers of the the earth. Uh, and then way down there, you can start getting into molten stuff and and uh, all that stuff. But I don't want to go into that in too much detail because uh, I may even confuse myself when it comes to that stuff. But anyway, folks, there's a lot of activity occurring in this region. So we got movement slippage here, right in southern Oregon, and the rest of the area. If you think about it, it's kind of just continuing to build up pressure even more when you see part of the Juan de Fuca plate subducting even further underneath the North North American plate. But the rest of the plate really is not moving. I mean, like I said, this is the last two days of activity. And just within the last, we can go the last 12 hours and you can still see quite a bit of activity just within that region. The last three hours is right here. That's still quite a bit for three hours. And that's just the last three hours today. Last three hours. And that's, um, you know, getting back to the movement, getting back to this part of the subduction area that is showing trimmer while the rest is not really moving. And well, what's happening? There's, there's, continuing to build up stress and uh, pressure within this already locked zone off here uh, off the coast here in this Cascadia subduction zone so it's something to watch um, of course you know we've seen this before in the past uh, roughly around the same intensity uh, and and of course nothing happened but uh, it's always a good idea to pay attention when we do see events like this where we're seeing uh, um, the slow slippage down there way down there below the surface of the uh, those two plates while the rest of the plate continues to build up stress because it is kind of it is one right the Juan de Fuca plate of course you got the Gorda uh, where's the other plate at let me show you Guys, real quick. Okay, here we go. So, yeah, here's like another overview of the plates in motion. And, of course, you got the West Coast over here. Um, Yeah, you guys see where those two green arrows are. It's not picking up my mouse for some reason, but two green arrows uh, right around that black line where it says Wendy Fuca plate, right? That's where we're seeing that lock, that locking taking place there, or the subduction, right? The two arrows pointing together is not a good thing. That's uh, that's where two plates are colliding, and uh, from there you got the Wendy Fuca plate, of course. A much bigger North American plate over here to the east and it subducts right the Juan de Fuca plate is going underneath not the other way around and uh, that's the air that's you know they're saying this this whole area could rupture and create that mega quake that uh, everyone talks about or it could just rupture slightly and create a, a pretty good shake shaker anyway but either way, this is a lot of built-up stress over the 300 years or so that uh, we haven't seen a major quake out here in the Cascadia region. Uh, and that's, you know, it's just an area to watch. And uh, whenever we see slow slip event movement, it's always a good idea to be on guard and, of course, always uh, keep an eye on, on the quakes and seismos. And that's kind of why I like running the live seismograph viewers over here so I can keep an eye on it. Uh, sometimes the USGS does not always um, send out earthquake notifications in in re in respect to like smaller uh, quakes here. Let me see here. Hold on. But I do run. Uh, I do keep an eye on some stations out here, relatively close uh, along the Mendocino coastline in Northern California, and. Um, Yesterday I was watching it and I, was, I started seeing a couple spikes on there, just little bitty spikes. 
and those are definitely micro quakes uh, at the surface there and of course USGS not reporting them because they just I don't know why um, but they're definitely micro quakes that were taking place um, up there in Northwest California today a little bit different I'm not seeing that on here um, more so we're just seeing the subduction the slow slip events happen but like I say that's that doesn't that doesn't actually mean that it's uh, relieving pressure now it may be relieving pressure in that zone where it is subducting slowly but when we're not seeing that on the entire scale of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone down there then we're then we're kind of looking at the pressure being built up in certain areas back building pressure um, on an already locked plate up there so anyway folks I just want to jump in there and, and uh, let you guys know what I'm seeing here on this end I don't keep the real-time trimmer detection map up here uh, but when I do see some stuff like that happening I do tend to make a video and uh, keep an eye on it um, right now let's go over here to uh, see where it went to Right now, surface quakes here in Northern California and uh, parts of Nevada are pretty quiet. Pull up that map here. Yeah, so that's the latest, the latest map here from the U, uh, from the Caltech website of earthquakes at uh, California and Nevada region. Just pretty, pretty quiet. Uh, a little bit of activity around the Bay Area there with a couple smaller quakes, um, mid to upper twos, uh, just right around San Francisco Bay Area and just to the south of there, but uh, relatively quiet for the most part um, in the state of California, uh, which is, I guess, kind of good for right now. But um, in Yellowstone, I was looking at Yellowstone a little bit earlier. Things look like they may have calmed down there. I'm not seeing any type of swarming activity like we had seen there for a couple hours um, a couple days ago. Uh, so that's good. But uh, like I say, this could start in the blink of an eye, so you never know. But anyway, folks, uh, just make sure you subscribe to the channel. If I do see some weird movement, some action going on, or possible action, uh, I will make a video in regards to that and uh, get it out there on the channel but uh, make sure you subscribe that way you can get notified uh, whenever i do make a video or if i do go live uh, which i am right now i'm broadcasting live uh, with the live stream here and uh, for some reason went offline last night again not for sure what was going on just been some weird stuff lately anyway i uh, hope everyone out there has a very safe day i think i covered everything i wanted to in regards to the activity um, with the slow slip event movement right now. Um, pretty sure I did. Yeah, and these maps right here uh, are very easy to find if you want to study a little bit more on this area uh, with the Cascadia Subduction Zone on Wikipedia. Uh, they do have actually quite a bit of articles there in regards to that. In fact, I just pulled that one up right there. Um, gives you a little bit of uh, information actually quite a bit of information on the Cascadia subduction zone itself and and what a, uh, a magnitude 9.0 scenario would look like far as the shake map goes um, which would cover well a good portion of western Washington and Oregon and of course this extends down to northern California as well uh, Intensity looks like it would be up around the severe shaking area uh, for a good portion of the coast. And I expect probably a little bit higher for those uh, cities that would be right around Gold Beach area and uh, to the north there as well, where uh, it's pretty well locked in that situation, in that area. So, but yeah, go check it out if uh, you get a chance. It's pretty cool. Uh, they got a couple different maps and subducting zone maps there if you want to go check out some pretty extensive uh, maps there so anyway all right um, I'll quit babbling on here and we'll get back to the live stream and uh, we'll chat you guys a little bit later stay safe out there